Elder Becker end up putting meat inside of her deep. Listen, ladies, if you have a man and he go to a nine to five, he's getting topped off by another sister. You can't be out here trying to preach and you're putting heavy meat in another man's wife and you think it's sweet. The woman be like, well, I ain't gonna be with you if you're doing that, fam. Just go do what the fuck you gotta do, man. She, she's gonna get with the program either way. Joseph fucked Mary. Bro, go out there, deal with another woman, get her pregnant. If your woman wanna leave, let her leave. That's her fucking problem. Pray for your death. You mark my words. You're cursed. Anyone that spoke this slander against me, you're cursed. And again, I tell you as I sit here, I pray for your death if you slander my name. You know what's so sick about this? You know what I'm saying? There's one particular content creator. I'm not even going to mention his name. He's a fucking idiot, right? This dude made a video, and it was with me, Brother Newbreed. Uh, you're with the Zot. We was out there in North Carolina on the land. This devil made a video and said he's concerned about the young lady that's in the video. And the young lady is Yowitazot's daughter. And he implied that Ringo is looking at Yowitazot's daughter. You fucking piece of shit. How sick could you be to make content like that and spin that to your audience? That's Yowitazot's wife. That's Yowitazot's daughter. We're down there on business. And you're telling your audience that Ringo is looking at Yowitazot's daughter and trying to build a community so he could get with his daughter. You fucking bastard. How sick could you be to utter something like that? And your audience bought it all. That's how evil social media is. Real sick. That's what he said. And he said many more things. It's just, it's just wicked. But then again, he's of his father, the devil. I mean, when you come out of Geno Jennings' ministry, you're coming out of a ministry full of satanic worship. So I'm not surprised. Well, I'm no fan of Geno Jennings, but you are on record stating that R. Kelly was a G, knowing that he married Aaliyah when she was only 15 years old. Now, Uwitaza's daughter appears to be around the same age, around maybe 14 or 15, maybe a bit younger. So any adult with discretion or discernment, they would act preemptively seeing young girls around guys who talk and think like you. Also, C-Rock Smooth and Geno Jennings, they do not believe in polygyny. So I believe they're aware that the Old Testament practice was for men to marry their wives really young, right after she started to experience the monthly woes of a woman. Now, you produced a map of the United States showing the age of consent in each state. And I don't think you realized how much you were telling on yourself. You went out your way to unveil that the age of consent was 16 in some states. And you already gave your blessing to the R. Kelly marriage to Aaliyah, who again was only 15 years old. So how young do you really like him, Ringo? I mean, this is a perverted land we live in, and someday they may lower the age of consent to age 13. What do you think about that, Ringo? See, you're very profane and reckless. You're stupid. Sin makes you stupid. You're not smart. Most of your viewers are stupid. And they are not smart. You have many demons. And so do your viewers. And you think the more you yell profanity and point into the camera and tell us that we're dumb, that we don't read, speaking curses, you think that makes you more credible. No. You're stupid. You're a fool. And all the curses you send to me go right back to you. Psalm 109.17 says, as he loved curses, so let it come to him. As he did not delight in blessings, so let it be far from him. Okay, what you're speaking is witchcraft. You're dealing with a lot of demons, and I wouldn't be surprised if you're purposely doing that. Ever. Could anybody tell me one song that R. Kelly made that's whack? I'll wait. One song. One song. Could somebody please explain to me one song that R. Kelly made that is whack? One. Just one. Could you name one? Every song the man made was a hit. Every song. Every song. The man never made a whack song. He never did. Every song is dope. The man was a fucking legend. A G. And you mad because I said that? 
I'm a, I'm a musician. You mad? All the fucking ladies wanted Kel. Every time the man pulled up, women flocked to him. All the women that are talking ish about, oh, he was messing with those those young 20-year-old women. They're of age. Why are you complaining? Oh, he's a pedophile. They're in their 20s. He's a pedophile. He's 50 years old. No, you're jealous. That's what it is. You're jealous because you grew old. You're jealous because you grew old. Kel's in his 50s and he's pulling 20-year-olds while you ladies are in your 50s and you're alone. That's why. Y'all the same ones that had the posters on the wall. Y'all the same ones that saw him and Aaliyah together. None of you had nothing to say during that time. Why now? Hypocrites. If R. Kelly married Aaliyah when she was 15 years old, then he was likely eyeing her when she was 13 or 14 years old. Also, in this very same live stream, Ringo TV said, you will be surprised at the age of consent in foreign countries. So listening carefully, it sounds like you're saying you prefer girls even younger than age 16, but you just are not willing to break any laws to do it. That, my friend, is the mind of a pedophile. Again, because if the states lowered the age of consent to 12, then you will boldly come out on your live stream saying, see, it's legal now. No, nah, Negro, you've been exposed. R. Kelly purposely sought after underage girls because he wasn't having the type of cooperation he wanted from older women who were still young, but they saw that perverted demon on him and he didn't have any game. Okay, he's a great singer, but he has no game. That's why he went after the younger chicks. Now, you're right in some points. Some of the older women, these women were idolaters, and they listened to R. Kelly's music. The first time they had sex was probably on one of his albums. Okay? And I wouldn't doubt that these women are jealous that the younger women were chosen by R. Kelly. But again, everything comes back to the false doctrine of polygyny. Because pedophilia or what is coined as pedophilia today, that was a part of the package deal under the law of Moses. You see how everything comes back full circle to polygyny? Men who had multiple wives and concubines, they could afford to have some of their older wives catch up with the young women to catch them up to speed on how to be a good wife. In addition to this, the young woman's father and her mother, they already raised her could have feared the most high God. But we're under captivity in this land here. Under the new covenant, we are to practice self-control. So it is better for a 16-year-old girl to practice for about seven years, keeping her virginity before being chosen at the age of 23, when she is still young and fresh, and she has no baggage, but she's exercised self-control. She has some kind of experience in practicing the faith as an adult. Okay, the scriptures say a false balance is an abomination. No, I do not believe in the foolishness of a woman you know, accumulating all these bodies, letting all these men come inside of her, and then she wants to all of a sudden get a husband. No, that's demonic. I do not support that. Okay, but again, a false balance is an abomination. I don't believe in older men, perverted men like yourself, taking advantage of 15, 16 year old girls. At your age, if you're in your 40s pushing 50, you are not the optional choice at this point. The younger woman. I remember there was one time where you had a woman, she was in my live chat. She's in her late mid forties, whatever the case is. And she said her daughter is 26 or whatever the case is. I told her to send me her daughter. I said, I don't want you. I want your daughter. She's the better candidate for me. And she got offended. I'm not going to get you my daughter. And I said, well, another man going to fuck your daughter. Another man is going to get your daughter and he's going to put heavy meat inside her. So if it's not me, it's going to be some other guy. You should want your daughter to be with a man that's going to take care of her. That's the problem with a lot of you ladies. You'll have a brother who will take care of your daughter, put your daughter in a good position in life. You don't want him to be with her because you're jealous. You would rather your daughter be with a pookie who's going to get her pregnant, leave her with a baby so she could be just like you. Actually, I agree with this sentiment here. 
Again, I do not agree with a married man expressing interest in a woman's daughter, but in that segment, Ringo actually made my point. In part three, I talked about how a woman was humbled by force under the law of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 22. Yet, more virtuous women and women in general, they were married or at least kept their virginity and their sanity. Okay, so that was the trade off. Unfortunately, 4,000 years later, sin has gotten exponentially more expensive. First, let's play this last segment, then I'll provide scriptures. Want the truth and then when a brother give you the truth you can't handle it this is why men lie this is why men lie men lie because you ladies cannot handle the truth i'll get online do a podcast you'll have a woman in chat crying about what i wouldn't be with no man that's doing it and i went i'm telling you, your man got another woman right now well my man ain't doing that my man would never do that your man got another woman on the job right now guaranteed There's another woman's breast on the job he's feeling up right now. You mean to tell me, I go to a nine to five, I'm there all day, you got all these fine sisters there, you gonna tell me I'm not with one of them? I'm gonna have me two of them, three of them, something like that. Why? Because I'm a man, that's my job. My job is to deal with women and multiply. Who told you that a man's supposed to just be with you? Who told you that? And half of you ladies, don't even be intimate with your man. You're not even in the bed with your man. You don't even love your man. You don't even provide the goodies for your man. And you expect him to just be like with just you and only you for the rest of his life just suffering in a prison? Are you out of your mind? See, what Ringo TV does is he speaks as though the majority rule. And that represents righteousness. And also this dictates the doctrine that he teaches. Is what he said true that most men cheat on their wives at the job? Yes. Or at least they do in their heart. I talked about this in my satanic employment series. But if this clown was reading the scriptures carefully enough, he would know that most people are going to the lake of fire when they die. Okay? There are far less believers in the Most High than there were 4,000 years ago under the law of Moses. And this is probably the greatest testament against the practice of polygyny today. For example, 2 Corinthians 6.14 says, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness? Proverbs 18.22 says, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor with the Lord. So it's already difficult to find a wife who is not an unbeliever. In part three, I briefly talked about Isaiah 4 verse 1 and Matthew 24 19, which further explains the humbling of the woman and her having to compete with many women for one man. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 11 through 15 to give further context. Verse 11 starts out it says but refuse the younger widows it's talking about the church okay in part three i also talked about a bishop being blameless okay if any man is qualified to have multiple wives it would be the bishop the scriptures state that he is to have one wife okay but let's continue it says but refuse the younger widows for when they have begun to grow wanton they grown impatient against christ they desire to marry so this is letting us know that this dilemma here these women even they are already aware that a man is to have one wife and they are competing with one another for the marriage of one man to one man okay that's why they're growing impatient because they're in the church and they're seeing these god-fearing men who are committed to only having one wife and these men, of course, are seeing the bishop who only has one wife. Verse 12, having condemnation. See, the condemnation just proves what I said because they know the word. Because they have cast off their first faith. Okay, they're condemned because they know the word, but they refuse to obey. Again, the woman is the weaker vessel. Okay, as I stated, 
The woman has a faith deficit. Okay, that's a generational curse that goes all, all the way back to the rebellion of Eve in the garden. Verse 13, and besides, they learn to be idle, okay, because in the mind of a woman is foolishness. Most women in their minds is foolishness, shopping and uh, gossiping and just complaining about their husbands, all right? They're not committed to being wives. That's why, again, the scriptures say he who finds a wife finds a good thing. It's going to be tough work to find a wife. All right. They learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house and not only idle, but also gossips and busybodies saying things which they ought not. Verse 14. Therefore, I desire that the younger widows marry their children. See, Paul is saying here, he desired that they marry when they are younger, but he doesn't give an age. That's because Paul also talked about self-control. Okay, still need to be wise enough and have experience exercising self-control. That way, when they finally do get married, or if they marry too soon, they're not considering that we're under captivity and we many things in our lives cause distractions and there are many things that a woman's going to have to deal with today that she didn't have to deal with under the law of Moses. So she's going to need some level of self-control. They didn't have Instagram in the law of Moses. You see what I'm saying? So she still needs to marry young enough during the childbearing years. All right. Continuing on, he's saying, bearing children, manage the house, give no opportunity to the adversary to speak reproachfully, okay? For some have already turned aside after Satan, all right? You see that? So, belonging to the faith, keeping the faith is the foundation of a man and a woman's pursuit of marriage. Because a believing woman, she can be virtuous, she can be righteous, beautiful, have the whole package, but then she gets deceived by a godless heathen who know a few scriptures, but he is an angel of light, okay? He's a wolf in sheep clothing. That's why the woman must be careful of a lot of these wicked men as well. That just further explains my point. That proves my point. It is difficult. It is even more difficult for a righteous woman to find a righteous man, okay? Because there are fewer men on the earth. And there are even more few righteous men. Okay? She has to trust that man, trust his leadership, trust his fear in the Lord, because if he doesn't fear God, then he's not going to fear keeping his, his vows to you. The reason why I say multiple wives equal multiple gods is because of the power of the woman. And because she's the weaker vessel, a lot of you might not like to hear this, but Satan knows how to use the woman far more than he does the man. Okay, and it all started in the Garden of Eden. Now, I've already provided scripture that proves despite there being so many women on the earth, few are worthy to be taken in marriage as a wife. And the scriptures are consistent from the Old Testament to the New Testament that the woman must be humbled, okay? Due to the transgression and the generational curse of Eve, okay? Eve desired to be like God. And that curse was transmitted into the bloodline of all women. So multiple wives equal multiple gods, which equals multiple egos. Most importantly, a man with multiple wives has a host of women who are unbelievers. And they will turn a man's heart from God. Book of Ecclesiastes chapter 25 verse 19 says, All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. You see that. And today we can see the wickedness of the woman expressed through OnlyFans accounts and Instagram and through overall the world of social media. Okay, you must understand that under the law of Moses, the fear of the Lord kept women from opening their legs and the practice of promiscuity and whoredom. Those women all their female counterparts, some of the most beautiful of them, is stoned to death. 
Okay, so that inspired the fear of the Lord. Okay, they were also aware that the spirit of jealousy could come upon a man, and that woman was at his mercy because under the law of Moses, the woman was considered the man's property. But in that generation, the good news was that most of those women, they went to heaven because they endured and fulfilled the standards of holiness. But today is the complete opposite. As I stated again, Matthew chapter 7, verse 14 and 15, pretty much summarizes that most people, overall, most people are going to the lake of fire when they die. So there are fewer believers in this generation and in the forthcoming generations than there have ever been in the earth's history. Therefore, we must be careful in who we choose to marry. This is the reason why the scriptures say, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Okay, so there are fewer believers to choose from the pot. All right. Don't let your flesh write checks. Your soul cannot cash in the afterlife. It's about fates and gates. You got to have faith and you're going to need God's grace.